Okay. That's like this weird thing. I don't remember where it is. I'm sure you could probably look it up and find it. It's like in someone's yard, and it's some weird thing that like you can go see. It's like it's like bizarre. That is bizarre. Um, that is but bizarre. Actually, I was actually going to mention you. Like, so I, I went to Chick Fil A today, and brag about it. Jeez. Not everybody, not everybody would like be familiar with Chick Fil A. But is it just me, or does Chick Fil A like have its own fucking traffic laws? <laughs> like I go into the fucking parking lot. I haven't been to this one in forever. I go in there and it's like, okay, there's this lane goes that way, and don't enter here. And I come here, don't block this. There's a stop sign there. This is the drive-through, and then okay, there's an X there to not block this, and then there's a cone there, so I don't go to that drive-through. I go to the other mm. one. Then there's like other ones where it's like a freaking like a gas station. Have Did you seen them? Like you pull in, there's like a shelter and shit. Is that is that where it has the person just standing and yeah. like taking your order in the and middle yeah, of the? Like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And like in the summer, there's fans. And in the winter, there's heaters. I that I've not seen, but that's that makes sense. It's nuts. The one over near Tanger, it's like um maybe like twenty minutes away, or maybe actually more like ten minutes away from Tanger, like outlets. Okay, okay. Like there's one like that where they've got like like little like space heaters and shit outside. It's bizarre. Do you know oh. what makes Chick-fil-A chicken, uh, what gives it its, its unique flavor? Why it's so good? Is this a joke about religious people? No, 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 no. It's a, like, seriously, I, I looked up um, a recipe to they make. soak it in milk? It's not milk. No, it's pickle juice. They soak it in pickle juice? It is soaked, it is soaked in pickle juice for uh, overnight from, from the previous day. Well, yeah. Got, you, got, you got the salt and you got the acid, so I'm sure that adds quite a bit. Yeah. But I found like a recipe to make um, chicken tenders and it involved like you soaked them in like pickle juice overnight and then you like, like breaded them and fried them and everything. And it tasted a lot like uh, Chick-fil-A. It was really good. That hey, is... what's up, Lee? Yeah, it is. It, isn't that interesting? I thought, but it, it's a good yeah. flavor though. My, my secret to a good Bloody Mary is pickle juice also. That's pretty, isn't, that's pretty common though. That's not yeah, like a, it is. yeah, because yeah, okay. people put pickles like in them. So it's like, yeah. yeah. Um, horseradish is another good one. If you like it spicy. I do kind of like it spicy. Me too. Oh, dude. What? Oh man. So, oh, did, how much do you like spicy food? Um, like, are you are you a big fan of like super spicy stuff? I mean, I don't like. I uh, dude. Okay, one of these one of the, these guys at work had some like some dudes masochistic hot sauce or kicking or yeah shredding yeah. or whatever it's called mm -hmm. and um it was like really viscous like really 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 like thick mm -hmm. and one of the guys put it on a cracker and ate it and i was like eh, fuck it so like oh, i did it too but the problem is is that like i don't know what happened if it was the fact that someone was holding it but it was a lot fucking runnier when i put it on like my cracker i was like oh fuck um and then like i i ate it and that was not, it was not fun. Like, yeah, it like, it's, I don't understand. Like, cause uh, like being, being like, being like half Indian, like I understand like, you know, chilies as a way to like, Lee just said that. Did you read that? Uh, <laughs> he literally, oh. <laughs> that's so funny. I, I didn't know if you read yeah. that. That's funny. The other thing is, is I'm also, I'm Punjabi. So like, I'm like, I'm like North Indian, South Indians tend to make spicier food. Um, actually I have a mm. friend that's been living in the US for like, he's been here for like, oh man, like eight years now. And he's in, he, he's from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation of that, by the way. Um, it's like way down south. And he like can't eat his mom's cooking when he goes home anymore. It's just, it's too it's, spicy. It's like too much. It's too much. Like, I don't know. His palate has weakened. Yeah. I think his wife is Gujarati too. And that, that might have something to do with it. I think she's Gujarati. Um, maybe, maybe not. But yeah, it's like, uh, it's, it's there to like enhance the food, but not like cover up other things. Cause there's so much going on in good Indian food that you don't want to cover up all the other shit. Like it's just, it's just one layer to a very complex formula. But what I was getting at though, um, I was wondering if you would be interested. What if like for our oh, no. like 52nd episode to like celebrate a year or something, we did um, like one of those, one of those spicy challenges. Have you seen like the, 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 the chip one or the hot nut? Uh, I'm what do you want some hot do you, do you want a few hot nuts in your mouth uh i this is like I, all i'm thinking of is have you seen the good mythical morning ones that they've done with the spicy yeah, stuff actually, yeah i love Rhett and link yeah uh, they're like, funny that one of them like one of them like almost died 
Like they did the thing like where yeah. I want to say it was Link. That'd be good he, content. His, like eyes were bloodshot. His face was red. He started turning yeah, blue at bad. one point. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. Like shoveling ice cream down his throat. Like oh, no, no. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Like I really, really, really don't want to. Oh, me neither. But that's like the exact reason why we should. Exa yeah, it, it would be good content. I think. Like I don't. I do not like the the length of the pain involved in that. Mm -hmm. Twice. Like, Twice. Uh, oh yeah, there's that too. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it had anything to do with the um with the hot sauce, but like at work the day that I did that, I had a terrible stomach ache. Like I couldn't sleep that. I'm night. sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you mean you don't, don't you don't know if it had to do with the hot? <laughs> well, I ate, it was I completely like unrelated. I ate like a new like noodle dish I'd never eaten before. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And there was like a lot of Napa cabbage on there. And I have no idea what Napa that is. can be well, cabbage in general can wreak havoc on your gastrointestinal True. system. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. Mm. I've actually found that the more it's cooked, the less issues I have. And they were like, like I think they call it like cr crisp soft or like soft crunchy. It's like where you you cook them to where they're like kind of soft on the outside, but there's a little bit of crunch in the middle. Okay. I think if I cooked them completely, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna fuck with no 10 mil Scoville. Fuck that. I have a. Also, I have one million Scoville hot sauce right now. It's called Mr. Ten, Pain or Doctor Pain or something like that. It's got like the yeah, image of like an executioner on the bottle. That sounds terrible. Yeah, we do live in North Carolina. True. Raise up. I mean, Carolina Reapers would probably be the ideal thing for us to eat. Are they North? Was that North or South Carolina? Uh, I don't know. It's like, I don't. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't say that they're all the same because they're definitely not. Well, no. I mean, the guy that developed it. You know, you know that he has. Um, he has another. Uh, uh, we're getting like way. Hold on. Should we like? Should we actually start the episode? We are like. No. Are, why would we do that? Because we it's are just, balls just, deep in. In. Yeah, um, we really are. Yeah, this has been like this has been seven and a half minutes of uh. Yeah. True. Okay. Well, the Reaper is one point five million. So. Okay. Okay. I've seen God. up to like 16. It's, Fort, it's, it's South Carolina, Fort Mill. Okay, I thought so, yeah. Well, what I was going to say, though, is um, he apparently has uh, another pepper he's developed that is actually hotter, but he's not going to release it until someone else breaks his record because he, he doesn't want to, like, break his own record. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the Carolina Reapers look scary. Like, you look mm -hmm. at them and you're like, this is a goblin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would... um. Oh, Here's the Good Mythical Morning episode where they did it. Wearing fucking plastic gloves to protect their hands. Well, yeah, you don't want to get the stuff on your it hands really before you put it in your mouth. Yeah. It really sucks when you get it under your nails. Uh. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's start the show. You ready? Wait, I'm praying. <laughs> Just kidding, man. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Metacast Podcast. That's the podcast that improves itself, improves ourselves, and improves the self in general. My name is Ty, I'm going to be your host, and as always, I'm joined by my ostentatious co-host, Distance. How are Hey! What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! Can you, can you censor that on YouTube? <laughs> uh, oh, that's going to be, that's, that's going to take effort in editing. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was, that's not, I mean, whatever, like, it's, ex you know... No, I, I should put like, more I effort into editing. Friendly anyways. wave. I thought it would be funny to just give the camera the finger because I'm usually like hi, but I just thought like maybe a different one. That's gonna ruin all of our monetization. The first thirty flexing. seconds has to be clean. That's the whole YouTube flexing. algorithm. Is that really true? That that is true. Yeah, like for some reason it has to do with like the first thirty seconds of a video not having like profanity. I don't know if it includes like um, ba it, that's basically sign language profanity, right? I don't know. I don't know yeah. if that counts, but I know I know like spoken profanity. There's something in the first 30 seconds of a YouTube video that that makes it not eligible for monetization. Not well, that our well, channel is eligible for monetization, yeah, anyways. Because so. like, we making money anyway. Uh. Yeah. We. Uh, but anyways, yeah. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, how are we getting derailed again? Um, oh God, I don't know. It's because it's what we do. It's because I gave the camera the finger because I'm an asshole. <laughs> All right. As long as it's as long as it's not my fault. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, so tonight we are, um, I like this idea. Why don't you, this is your, your topic. Uh, I feel like I say this a lot. You did come up with a lot of the topics recently, but like, since this is kind of a, um, like a, a term, I don't know, did you coin this term or where did this come from? I just, I guess it, someone else might've used it, but when I said it, I'd never heard anybody else use it. Okay. Okay. So it is a distance original. Okay. I was going to say that, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but yeah, lead us, uh, lead us into what we're talking about. Yeah. So, um, the whole idea is that, um, I think that a lot of the time people like try to kind of flex by like getting cool stuff, like, you know, a nice car or an Audi, BMW, um, you know, sports cars, what have you, or moving into an apartment that's maybe a little too expensive or um, buying like, you know, a bunch of guitars that are really cool to show off. And a lot of it's just like a way to flex. And a lot of the time, most of the time, when people are trying so hard to flex by having stuff, um, they're usually at an age where, you know, they're not in like the best monetary position to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you end up in a lot of debt just from trying to look cool and flex to everybody about how like successful you are or, or what a baller you are or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of symptoms, but the main reason why I wanted to, um, talk about this one is because it's something that, you know, I've done there. Th these are mistakes that I've made too. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, you know, in, you know, my sort of early mid thirties, still kind of doing damage control from some of the mistakes I made when I was younger. Cause I was trying to impress people. Well, I think that like, it's, a, uh, I think it's been a mistake that probably we all make and mm -hmm. in in varying degrees right you can do this in in a very small degree you could do this like to the degree of um uh, i'm trying to think of like what's the the furthest you could take this buying a house to impress someone or you know going to a school yeah. just to impress certain people you know like go, getting yourself yeah. into literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of in debt um i guess certain cars would be the same thing like um but it brings me to to one question then um is it, is it really only bad when it's debt? If you can actually afford stuff, if you can actually afford it, if you're not getting yourself in the debt, if you have the money for something, but it's, but you're buying it just simply to impress other people, basically. I mean, that in itself is still a negative thing, right? It's more about the, the idea of, um, yeah, uh, caring about, uh, the, the impressing others. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah i mean it's more about that because i mean just because you have like i mean like there's a bunch of shit that i'd love to buy right now like a, like a new computer chair or like <laughs> a new gun or like uh a new bike or a new leather jacket a new um, computer chair a like decent... a like a racer style chair is no, that what you would get no no never okay not one of those chairs are ridiculous okay just making sure if i was watching just... this on youtube observe how ridiculous this chair is um yeah as he... <laughs> as you like move around there you go see <laughs> awful silly what are you are you a, a indie car driver or a or a podcast host like what make up your mind <laughs> um but no it won't be one of those but That's there's fair. like a whole bunch of stuff that i would love to or like a you know any number of things that mm -hmm. would be like super cool and like i've got a decent amount of money saved up where i could like do that but it wouldn't be smart because yeah. you know like just because you can doesn't mean you should and Tr true also, true not, not to mention, like you know, people our age are kind of fucked as far as retirement goes. So, we, but, but I, we, I was asking we more. Take care of ourselves. I was asking more, not just like have the money, but actually like have the money to spend on it. If someone like has disposable income, and you know, it's like I mean, really, like it, it, the idea of just like flexing is more important than the like. Well, I mean, digging yourself into debt is is horrible, but really, like what we're trying yeah. to uh, tackle is the is just the like. Um, caring so much about other people's opinions that you're um, pur purchasing things or, or like trying to decorate yourself yeah. or like, like care about th monetary things just simply because of that opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say that that's, that's probably the more important issue because it's like um, it will, it's not intelligent to go into debt on excessively on anything if you're going to be outside your means on it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you purchase something that you have the money to purchase if you're purchasing that thing specifically to impress people then i think mm. there's a problem there because sometimes you'll impress people as like a byproduct like yeah if you really really like um you know cars and you buy like an, an interesting car like a porsche 928 or you can get a hold of like a 
R32 like skyline that got imported to the US or something like that. Mm-hmm. You might be purchasing that because it's something that you enjoy and you have the money for and people that are interested in cars will be impressed by that. Mm-hmm. But as long as it's not like specifically to impress someone. But um, did- there's like an interesting question though of like a chicken and egg thing. I, I mean, it's probably impossible to answer, but subconsciously, how do you know that you aren't into that because it impresses people? You, you don't really. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't really yeah. like get to the bottom of it, but it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good point. But I guess, yeah, trying to isolate though and, and determine if you're, um, I'm going to say motives, but yeah, I guess motives is a good term, but like, yeah, if your motives in being interested in something or, or wanting to, I mean, d- does this, does this go beyond monetary things? It's, I mean, it's really, it's just, it's all about just owning things, yeah. right? Yeah. It's more about like specifically, there's all kinds of dumb shit that people can do to try to impress each other. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it would be specifically, yeah, I would say about like owning material items. Cause at least for me personally, that's a lot of what, what, I've done because like as far as like trying to impress people goes like in the past when that's been a motive of mine I've never like boasted about things really yeah Um, yeah it's been more like trying like you know like I dated I dated um a a girl for a while woman whatever female uh I dated a, a cisgender female um that uh I was like trying to impress impress her and like took her to like all these like restaurants that were like ridiculous and like Mm -hmm. you know like like mixology type bars and stuff like where you know like one drinks like 18 bucks like just dumb shit like that and it was like all completely because then like i look back and i'm like why i don't even want to date somebody that's interested in that anyway (laughs) like you know like if 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 you if that's if that somehow attracts you to me then you're not somebody i want to date anyway yeah so it's like it's just completely ridiculous it's silly um but, but at the time, like it felt like a status thing, right? Like it, it yeah, was kind of, exactly. yeah. And, and I think that's also kind of like a byproduct of, of being like half Indian that like at least, my dad's like old, he grew, he was, he was born in the 1940s in India. So mm-hmm. there's a, still a lot of that, like status and like classism and things like that. And I think that there is some, some kind of influence from that in me um, that I've had to sort of like figure out and overcome. Mm-hmm. And like, even now, like, I think my dad's over that stuff. I mean, like, he turns 80 this year. So I think he's over a lot of that too. Um, Cause he moved here sure when he was like 20, he, he moved here when he was like 22. You, you'd have, I, I feel like by that age, you almost have to be yeah. over it. Like, I mean, like, like it, yeah, I don't yeah. know. He like drives a Camry, lives in like a mm-hmm. suburban, like mass produced house. Like it's not, he doesn't feel the need for any of that stuff now. Like. Yeah, he's more about like he's more about like doing things like doing deeds that he thinks are cool or interesting. Like, well, you know, I told him he's like a actually I think he's taking a break now, but he was like playing poker professionally. For yeah, a you while. told me about that. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. It's like yeah. that stuff matters more to him than like having shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I remember like it was like his childhood dream to like own a Jaguar and like he bought one like in the nineties. Yeah. I remember I was about to say when we were friends as kids, he had one. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like all like pumped up. He flexed hard with that car. I'm sure. Yeah. If there were people over like, like adults over at our place at one point, he specifically said, I was like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And he goes like, says to my mom, like, uh, do I need to move my Jaguar? Is it in the way? I'm like, why the fuck didn't you just say car? Bro? That's, yeah, that's funny. That's, I was like, I'm like nine. Like, yeah, okay, make sure. Uh, knows. Because it's um, not just a car. It's a Jaguar. Right, it's a excuse Jaguar. me. Jaguar. It's a, ja- Jaguar. a Jaguar. Excuse me. Yeah, but that's back when Ford owned the company. So it was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, 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 I did realize, I guess, so we are mainly, we're, we are talking about specifically materialistic and mainly financial things. I did think of one other avenue uh, where it's not owning things, but another way that people do this. Uh, going places or like that you can't really yes. afford trips or like more, events or things specifically that... so you can take like the mountaintop selfie in the alps yeah yeah exactly like yeah yep so i yeah so um why is it that you think we have this um I would, I, I don't, I, I don't want to say nature, but I, I almost feel like it is kind of like part of our nature, but why do you think we have this desire to do this? Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's just 
part of it is there's a lot of reasons why. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think uh, part of it is just trying to, I think for me at least, I think a lot of it has been like being uh, like a a single like heterosexual male Mm -hmm. that I think that I've had this impression that I need to appear a certain way. Okay, Um, yeah. And I think that that might be like a leftover thing. Like, well, it's not, I mean, not even really leftover. It's pretty common. I mean, to look like a desirable partner or whatever, like, you know, I can't, I can't like, you know, kill a whole lot of buffalo and bring them home to you or whatever. But not with that attitude. Um, <laughs> but I can like have cool shit and be like, <laughs> here, come have cool shit with me that's attractive right like i don't know Mm -hmm. and then you know some of it like it's like might be an ego thing or and also an insecurity thing Mm -hmm. um compensating for one thing with another and i've actually found that over time as i i work on other attributes about myself that i want stuff less and less like Mm -hmm. like not just not just to impress people but also to like feel fulfilled you know okay yeah well i I, I value the the lack of clutter a lot yeah yeah that's it's it is nice to have like less shit because it's less stressful Mm -hmm. um and uh because it well you know because we talked about the whole minimalism thing yesterday Mm -hmm. it's like trying to like consolidate things like end up with like a few very high quality items like did you see the great gatsby remake with leonardo dicaprio in it yeah of course yeah okay i didn't see it but I was actually watching a video. I think it was on, I want to say it was on Art of Manliness uh, the on their YouTube channel. Okay. Or there was a, I forget how cheesy the name is, but the guy, his name's Antonio Centeno, I think. He has a, he has a thing called Real Men, Real Style. Hmm. And what, but they're affiliated with each other. They kind of like do like sort of a tit for tat thing with each other's like promotions. Okay. Um, but he was saying, like, you don't have to. It was on. I was doing a minimalist wardrobe. Okay. And there's a scene apparently where Gatsby like pulls all this clothing out and like throws it into yeah. the foyer. Yeah, yeah. Is it pretentious? That I said foyer instead of foyer. I don't know. I just I just thought that was the right way to pronounce it. Uh, well, we uh, Americans have very pretentious pronunciations. Uh, actually, ask Lee, a, Lee. Ask Lee. He'll tell you. Yeah, um, true. <laughs> yeah, we call a fillet a fillet. Um, but. Yeah, so, but do you know what scene I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. So it's like, one of the things they say is, like, to have a good wardrobe, you don't have to have, like, one shirt in every color, like Gatsby, mm-hmm. and it shows, like, that clip. Okay, okay. And and it's like, because I, I don't know the context of the clip, but it seems a bit like he's trying to impress somebody there. I don't remember, honestly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, that's just on the subject of minimalism. It's... And uh, I think, are we still going to do a podcast about that whole thing? I'd, I'd be down to. Yeah, I think that's a good topic. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, the lack of clutter is nice. I, I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then when I say like having less higher quality things or like one really, really nice thing, it's like not spending outside of your means to get that though. Like, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. One of the. Yeah, it's pronounced. Oh, yeah, okay. foyer. Foyer. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you actually say it. See, but I, I do think, like, getting back to, like, the, the, the psychology, I do think that there is part of it. I, th- that's why I kind of brought up the question earlier about, um, uh, shit, sorry, my nose just closed themselves for some reason. Uh, that, that was why I brought up the question earlier about, like, trying to isolate the, like, the reason or, or like, trying to really determine if, if your motive for, for wanting something is, is, I guess, pure or not. But it's, like, I think that, there is some part of human nature that we want to have, like, especially when technology is concerned, we like the newest thing. And it's like, I, I think that that's like the part of it may actually be ingrained in human nature that, I mean, what makes our species, mm-hmm. what it is, is the, our, our use of tools. You know, that's really what set us apart from the other primates. That's kind of like where, where we broke off. So it kind of makes sense for humanity to be interested in the, like the newest gadget. Mm-hmm. so like yeah. but i but also but i mean like you're saying though if you're like if you're you know financially stressing yourself to have it that's definitely a, a bad thing but just like the the desire to experience it or or even i mean if you if you can afford it the desire to own it i don't think is is necessarily negative 
Would you agree? Or, or do you think that maybe like it is kind of deep down, there is kind of part of it that is, uh, I mean, wanting to be I, flashy. I think that the desire for that thing, I don't think, I, I agree with you that it's not inherently negative. Like you can't just say that the, the desire for it itself is negative. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the what's the is it in and of itself isn't that the figure of speech people use I guess, for that? yeah i don't know um th that um but I, I think that it requires a lot of self-exploration as to why you're doing it or like why why you want the thing or mm -hmm. what you want the thing for because there's there's several situations where i have to think to myself the the current thing works just as well why replace it yeah, yeah. Um, like, I've like, had to do that with my phone. I mean, I'm still using an iPhone 6. You know, that's quite a few generations yeah. old. That it's like, if it's not yeah. broke, do I necessarily mm -hmm. need to replace yeah. it? But and, and I totally agree on the smartphone thing. Because I, I, the only reason why I haven't, I have an 8 is because my 6 died. Mm -hmm. Or else I'd still have an iPhone 6. Yep. Um, but yeah, what? I mean, I feel you on that. Like, I don't, I don't understand when people have to have the latest, greatest smartphone. But I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to act like every year when like new road bikes come out and new mountain bikes come out that i'm not like clicking around all the web pages and flipping through all the magazines thinking i want all this shit yeah yeah and, like every time i go to the bicycle shop to like pick up a, like a fucking valve for a tire <laughs> or like you know Wind window uh, shopping the new the new model yeah and I'm, I'm like uh oh that's kind of say hey you want to test ride it i'm like i better ah fuck it yeah i'll test ride it and did, they, did like, they do test rides yeah, hell yeah. I guess, like, yeah, at, I like guess that makes end, sense. Yeah. At high end bicycle shops. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Go to Cycles de Oro. Ask for Woody. How do they yeah. prevent you from just riding off with their bike? Well, I mean, sometimes if they don't know you, they'll hold your license. Okay. But like the shops I go to, like they all know me. Gotcha. So, like, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they know I'm not going to, like, they know where to find me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, it, I'm, and eventually I'm going to need to pick up something. So <laughs> it's like, oh, he'll be back. Yeah. We'll he'll be back. back. Have the cuffs ready. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to act like I don't get excited when I see that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. And I can even think about like cars, like yeah. 2007, the new Camry in 2007 was super cool, but they're kind of like, eh, now. That was, a, um, hold, that was a very interesting example. You All right. Yeah. For a but car. The 2019, the 2019 Camry, very aggressive, very mean. Are you being serious right now? Camry okay. The really? reason why. Okay. The Camry in 2007 was a redesign. The body was a complete redesign. And what they did is it was because just because it's a practical car doesn't mean it has to look like one. So they made it look actually pretty interesting. They got some cool design going on with it that Japanese companies didn't do that much. Okay. Is it, yeah, that was a, yeah. And actually, fun fact, Motor Trend awarded the 2007 um, Camry car of the year. I think they had it down to the Porsche Cayman and the Nissan GTR. And they gave it to the Camry because everyone can afford to have a Camry. But like when that came out, look at the one from the year before. Versus the 2006 Camry? Okay. Yeah. Or was it 2005 when the cool one came out? Oh, wow. Yeah, that is like a very stark difference. Yeah, like b between like what it was and then what it, what it became. Yeah. Like I really like that. But look at a 2019 Camry. 2019 Camry. Okay. See, I love what's happening because cars Ooh, look yeah. Like like they look aggressive now. Like I like angry looking cars. Like there's mm -hmm. one that has like a, if you can find the sports model that has a glass roof, like, like they're mm. very like mean looking. I like the, yeah, the front end for like for yeah. a four door family sedan for a Camry. Yeah. That, that looks very sporty, but give it the same amount of time. 12 years from now, I'll think that that one's boring looking and the new one's cool. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, probably. See, I've always wondered that same thing. We are, we are probably so off topic, but I've always wanted that same thing about aggressive music with like, with really like heavy, heavy, heavy metal picture. Like right now, what is the most brutal heavy music you can think of? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, dealer or like okay. prison. Can you um, picture music getting heavier? Yeah. But in, in like, in which direction? Well, then, then do it, right? Because you'd be breaking new ground. Uh, but it's like, I mean, like, I, I could, it's, it's entirely possible. You just have to do some crazy shit to make it heavier. But it's like, I guess it's the fact that, cause, cause it's interesting because we're getting in all kinds of territory too, because it's like, do you have the law of depreciating returns? Mm -hmm. Like where you probably, you, you probably learned that in your degree program. Um, oh, I don't know. 
What is economics again? Isn't, isn't that an economics thing? I don't know what economics I even means. Was. You know that. Oh, eco <laughs> economics. I thought I, I thought does, I was in culinary school. That? All right, like I, when we when we weren't baking, I was very confused, and I just like went with done, it. You got done. You're like, I still don't know how to skin the salmon. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, where did I learn? Um, so yeah, but yeah, you know, it's like you get something new, and every time mm -hmm. you get a new thing, the the satisfaction you get from it decreases every mm -hmm. time. And I think that maybe it's also that on the subject of flexing, mm -hmm. that each thing seems less impressive to you. It has like to. Every time you acquire a new thing, it's less impressive. Yeah, yeah. Which I think leads to, like, it, with everything, there's that you're kind of chasing the dragon in one way or another, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you've, yeah you've, you've heard that expression, right? Like, I, I yeah. think it would be the same with flexing, where, like, you're, like you're saying, I think each new thing is going to bring you less satisfaction, and that's going to yeah. end to even, uh, or lead to e even more overextending in the end. It's like what they talk about in like Fight Club about, you know, he says when his apartment explodes mm, um, mm. that he's like saying I was almost complete. That he was getting like an impressive wardrobe and all this stuff that, you know, and he was talking, he even talks about like the couch problem getting solved. That's like that that's a really good example couch, to no matter bring what up. I do, the couch problem is out of the way. Yeah. That's a really good example to bring up. I like that because he did. Um... He spoke about how like he he identified as his stuff. He was like, I and you don't understand. I like that. I am that apartment. Those, those things are me. Like, wasn't yeah. that a line from that movie? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he says something about like that. That. Oh yeah. There's a part where he says that wasn't. I loved every stick of furniture in that place. It wasn't just a bunch of stuff. It was me. He actually yeah. says that to the to the cop when they call. Yeah. Um, like yeah. Investigating. That, that's right. And then it's like yeah. And the award goes to or like yeah because he's he was acting but, um the actor. It was playing the character was acting. Um, but, okay, so if, if it's if we know that it's not a good thing and it's, it's, and it's like causing financial detriment, why do, why do we do this so much? Why is this such a prevalent thing in our society? It's not like a, you know, it's, it's like we're not talking about, um, a, a fringe issue that, you know, like is a, a problem that not many people have to deal with. We're talking about something that's kind of like ingrained into every bit of marketing, ingrained into just kind of like a, a mainstream living, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, no matter like where we go, there's, and the, the, the worst part is that it's not while it may not be good for the individual all the time mm -hmm. well, well arguably if you go into debt over it it's not good for the economy yeah. but um cuz if, if not enough debt then you end up like you know collapsing everything because stuff's you know bass backwards um that cuz the the economy only works if people are spending money and they're spending yeah. money constantly so it's like you can kind of watch out for yourself, but it's like, <clears throat> but if you, if you watch out for yourself and you're more sensible at, about these kinds of habits, then is it good for the economy or not? It, Does it really affect it? I mean, it, it has to, it's like, it, it's if, well, I mean, well, what's the alternative, right? If people aren't spending money on, on, I mean, for lack of a better term, useless things, if, if people aren't, um, they're not just going to be sitting on the money, the money is still going to be going to be spent. So I don't know if it would necessarily impact the overall economy that much, or just like where yeah, dollars are flowing. Yeah. I think that if we're just more sensible about where we spend money and we spend mm -hmm. it effectively, that will, that we're not going to like destroy the economy. Like, I don't know why, like I'm getting on that, like sort of sort of thing but but it's like you know it's, but you're right i mean everything is built around this it's like mm -hmm. you know like jesus i've tried to fucking unsubscribe from express like from their email list yeah like 30 times L literally like i'm I'm not exaggerating i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it was close to that and it's surprising you know, just fuck it fuck it i'll just mark it as junk <laughs> and then the, the the application will move it to my junk folder mm -hmm. but it, that constantly like every 
every week, like save this much, save that much, save this much on that amount of money. I'm like, how about I just save all of it by yeah. not buying anything? Except, yep. Yeah. Um, and it, that there's this whole idea that I think we're fed this idea that, that, that we're pushed to feel like we're incomplete or we're not good enough. And maybe, yep. maybe we're not really impressing anyone. Maybe we just have this stupid idea because of all the marketing we've been exposed to that someone will be impressed by it because like, I don't know. I don't look at, I don't usually look at, okay. I was at, I was at Sur La Table the other day, the kitchen store. Okay. I, was like, I have no guy, idea what that is. A guy walks out of a cake shop right next to the place with his wife. Did you get a new kitchen gadget? Uh, I mean, not like, not like gadget. Okay. I got like, no, gets me, dude, really? You, you <laughs> love gadgets. So you have your little garlic got, thing that you talk, told me about? I, bought, I actually went with the whole minimalism thing. Okay. And I got rid of several pieces of shitty nonstick cookware. Mm. And I bought like some like scan pan stuff, which is supposed to be really good. Okay. Um, they're, uh, they, they market this stuff as being like really tough and durable and there's like really particular care instructions. So, and that's the other thing when you when you're truly when you truly care about things mm -hmm. because it's almost like it's almost like being a hyper materialist by owning less stuff because the stuff the less yeah. things that you have like you take much better care of them well it's caring about um, the the quantity over quality or i'm sorry other quality over quantity yeah sorry yeah uh so like I, that's what i ended up purchasing so i got rid of several shitty pans that like just suck now that mm -hmm. were not durable at all mm -hmm. to buy those two so i, I replaced like i replaced like th three ish maybe four i might i might get rid of an extra one too do you have a um, do you have a cast iron oh hell yeah yeah okay just making sure of course i didn't that's know if i should take you seriously or not yet all right yeah i have one that's an heirloom and one that's a mm. future heirloom okay yeah, one's like a, a tuba, like a, for like flatbread, making like rotis or chapatis. Yeah. Um, did, did, so when you said that to, to me, um, did you expect me to know what that means? Or did well, you? The, no, that's why I said the next part. Okay, just making sure. The, but the yeah, way you said these. the first part, like the intonation of it sounded like you were talking to someone that just like would know what it means. I was like, wow, he ex expects well, me to know for, that. Well, it was one of those things like where I, I said it and I was like, and I, and I probably did say it like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wait, he probably doesn't know what that is. I should explain immediately. Gotcha. Okay. So okay. like, as I'm saying, I'm like, you need to explain this stupid. And like, okay, <laughs> explain it. Um, but yeah, it's like, so I was outside and like this guy walks out and he's wearing an SRT shirt, like okay. Dodge SRT. Okay. And there's a Challenger SRT next to us. I'm like, bro, if you get into that, that's a, that's a tubla, not, not a tubla, Lee, uh, mm -hmm. in the chat. It's, and I'm butchering the pronunciation, like of the, of the, uh, um, the pan. I think in I think in English characters, like it's T A W A. So yeah, people mm. uh, get online and find those on Amazon and make cool go. Indian food before yoga. Um, it's delicious with kale. So Just you've kidding. got yours is is cast iron though. Yeah, it's cast iron with a wooden handle. That's cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, um, but that's the thing is like, and then the guy gets in this like, like really noisy V8, you know, Challenger SRT. And it's like, I don't think that anybody looks at, I think that most people, when you see someone in a sports car, mm -hmm. it's like, eh, uh, whatever. If you see someone in a noisy sports car, you're like, what a tool. Usually. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't really think that a lot of the stuff that we think, we think it's somehow going to impress people, but it's not. It depends. Like, I don't know, time, man. Have you ever seen a Lamborghini or Ferrari on the road? Yeah. Well, did you not like, added. I mean, come, like, did you not break your neck trying to get more looks at yeah, it? Yeah. Well, it's cause it's a novel item, but like yeah. a challenger, like, well, whatever. yeah, true. Even, true. At, even an SRT, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, true. A Corvette's more exciting than that. And that's mm -hmm. an American car. Mm hmm. Um, but at the extreme, there are things that literally, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm impressed. It's more just like, I mean, I guess like you're saying, because it's so novel, it's like, oh shit. Like I didn't, I haven't seen one of those yeah. in months. Like, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, and even if you don't know what it is, it's like, Ooh, spaceship, mm -hmm. but wait, it has wheels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I do get excited about it, but a lot of it all, all has to do with the attitude of the person when the Lamborghini parks, what's the person that gets out? Like, mm. like. You know, there's there's guys like when I was younger, I'd see them get out of a Lamborghini, be like, "Oh, cool, Mister Nice Car." It's like, "Oh, you know, it's just a car." Yeah. You know, it's it's not a big deal. 
and they'll be like, hey, you want to sit in it? Like, yeah. And then they'll like open it, let you sit in the fucking car. Or then there's the other guys that are like, like, hey, nice car, mister. Yeah, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> Here, take my sunglasses. I can afford another pair. I mean, he does own a Lamborghini. That's pretty awesome. Can you, can you not drool on the car, please? I got to take it home. Like, you know, when that, it's, it's all about the attitude. Because mm-hmm. then in that case, you can sort of tell that there's someone that's trying to like be this thing or fit this sort of um, persona of like, you know, hey, I got money. Whereas the other dude's like kind of yeah. humble, like, ah, you know, it's just a car. And he also wants to share the joy with someone like, oh, hey, do you want to sit in it? Like, because then that way he knows that that like little like, you know, 22 year old kid gets to tell his, his friends at work and say, dude, oh my God, I sat in Lamborghini. It was so cool. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like, and that's like, that's someone that's actually wanting to share the experience. And, and for me, like, that's kind of like, that's kind of what I'm like with, with stuff like that. Like, <laughs> well, cause you know, like I can't afford a supercar, but it's like, oh, Hey, cool motorcycle. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. You, you want to hear it? Like <laughs> here, man, read the, read the throttle. Like, vroom, vroom. oh, that's so cool. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah it, like, you know, like, sit on it man like you know you like it what do you think you know and then that's like more my thing mm-hmm. and or like you know well, I'm like, like oh wow a ducati i'm like well it's not any more fun than any other motorcycle you know yeah yeah i like it gets down to like one of the questions that i had i guess is is um getting back to you because there are times where I'm, I'm still struggling to find the right word to to use for this but where like your your motivation for for owning something is, is pretty pure. You know, like I, like I would argue, I guess, like, just like you're saying about your bike, I don't think you own a bike to show off. You own it because you enjoy riding it and that's something you actually enjoy. Like the guy that is kind of um, a little more humble or a little just more, you know, uh, n- normal about his Lamborghini, he owns it because he enjoys driving that car. It's not mm-hmm. like a tool to, to impress me. So there, like if you're honest with yourself and you're able to figure out that like something is just to make yourself feel better, um, that's how, how do you keep yourself from lying to yourself? I guess it's like, I feel like with a lot of things, it's very easy to, to get to, um, to, to feel like you're like, Oh yeah, well, I just want this because it's better quality and it'll like, you know, it'll in the long run, it'll be a, a smarter financial decision. And you know, like you very easily, um, uh, rationalize yourself into, to getting, you know, all sorts of nice expensive things you can't really afford or like in, in, in all reality, you're like, you're probably doing it because it's the, the cream of the crop and people are going to be impressed by it. Yeah. I think that, I think we, I think we should actually do another podcast, like specifically about materialism. So we can kind of zero mm-hmm. in on those things. Okay. In this case, I think it's because it's, it's the impressing people part that's, that's like the other thing, but there's also times where like, maybe you're not doing it because of how you want people to view you, but because you're trying to fulfill something um, Mm -hmm. in yourself. And I think that that's one that we actually wish, let's just, do you want to do that next week? Sure. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. So I figure we can do materialism next week to kind of tie into this. Sure. Yeah. It's more specifically, I guess, because there's, so man, this is, this sucks. Cause like, uh, you do this thing where you like ask questions and I like didn't think about them before and they're the, like, but they're really good questions and they need to be asked. But if I knew already, then I could figure something out. But yeah, I true. don't really yeah. know. I think you need to figure out what purpose the thing serves. Okay. And if it's financially practical for you that you can mm-hmm. afford it and be comfortable and that is something that will bring you a, a proportional amount of joy or functionality mm-hmm. versus what you're spending on it. Yeah. Um, Cause I mean, I can tell you that when I bought like the mountain bike I have now, like it's, I, my, a friend of mine like sold me his old frame mm-hmm. and he built it for me. And if he hadn't built it, I never would have been able to afford a bike that nice. Gotcha. So like, I, I don't, and I tell people that like, but I, I mean, I still like it when like other guys or well, people really, when other people are like, oh man, cool bike. Mm-hmm. Like I, there's something that like, I'm like, oh cool. You know, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, like, and, but I'm not like, yeah, bitch, I'm awesome. Like I'm more like, oh yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, usually what I'll say is I'll be like, she appreciates the compliment. Yeah. That's, um, <laughs> that's incredibly cheesy, but that, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 
it's it's like super dorky but it's yeah. not like pretentious like i feel like it makes it because i don't i mean i it's i still kind of like it when yeah. people say that well it, but, it feels good to to own nice things or like like it's yeah. not the like and it's so weird because it's not like you don't want other people to covet it or anything it's not that you're like oh i like that i have something that other people want it's just but it does feel good to know that like this tool i have or something that i'm that i have is, is high quality i guess like yeah and and all i mean if i'm in a spot where like if it's like in a parking lot at a trailhead or something like mm -hmm. i'll let people ride it if they want to mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask them hey do you want do you want to take it out for a minute like mm -hmm. yeah, i'm totally fine with that um, cause the, the one thing is, is the fork that's on that bike. Um, it's a unique one and it, there's not, I don't think there's any bikes that come with it stock. And a lot of people will ask questions about it and I'll be like, well, here, just try it. You know, like here, hop on, like, you know, are you, you tell me which one are you, are you talking about the green one or uh, which? No, I'm talking about the one that, the one that you've actually never seen in person. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, in, it's in the bedroom. I wake up to that one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That's the, okay. <laughs> that's this my the, favorite. <laughs> it's your, it's your, it's your bottom bitch. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, that's my favorite one. That's, well, that's the that's, bottom uh, bitch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I, I don't under, I guess I don't under, I thought I understood how that terminology was used, but I guess not. Oh, well, and you know, it may actually, it may be me that doesn't understand. I would not be surprised either way. I mean, I just, I tried to figure out what it meant out of context, and I think I might have been wrong. I think we're just both, I think we're both way out of our wheelhouse when we're talking about we can, bitches. We can Urban Dictionary that later, maybe. And then at, at least find some humorous quotes using it, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, like, I, but it's like, I didn't get that thing because I wanted people to think it was awesome. It's because I... I need a bike that performs because I don't perform. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it was really a requirement. Like I can't ride on anything other than that mountain bike or I'll get the crap beat out of me by the trail. Gotcha, yeah. So that was the main reason. So in that case, I think it was really like, I wasn't really trying to impress people necessarily. But mm -hmm. I can tell you the I had a, I bought a 2014 Jetta that it was it was black. And I had another car that I traded in for that Jetta and I ended up with negative equity. Mm -hmm. um, and I got, I got someone with really good credit to co-sign on it for me. And then I actually ended up taking them off the loan later, mm -hmm. but it was basically a $20,000 Jetta, which is ridiculous because mm -hmm. it was used. Yeah. It was it's used an expensive too. Jetta. Yeah. And I put like aftermarket taillights on it and I found some like really nice Momo like rims that I ordered, mm -hmm. put those on there. Jeez. Um, and I, I put like a, like a bunch of stuff on the car to like make it look cooler. Mm -hmm. And then I got T-boned by a Honda element and I, I don't have the car anymore. That sucks, yeah. um, and luck, luckily, oh my God, like always get gap insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, luckily I had gap insurance on the vehicle. Um, so okay. I was able to like come out of that. Okay. But if I hadn't, I would have been completely fucked. Yeah. I was worried there was going to be and, a really bad end to that story. I'm glad that that's <laughs> the thing is like that, that car, that was all cause I wanted people to look at it and think it looked cool. Huh? Okay. Like that was all for that. I mean, well, I got but, some enjoyment, but the thing is I got enjoyment out of driving the car. Yeah. But I, all the other cosmetic shit, that stuff was to impress others. The, like I could have, I could have gotten just as much enjoyment out of the car if I hadn't added all the other dumb shit. I mean, could have. And see, that's where I'm like having the, that's, I think that's one of the places where I'm struggling is like your point is, is hundred percent correct. The cosmetic shit is because, you know, like I talked about, I think it actually, this was off the air. This is just when we were talking the other day, but I'm like a big, like, um, function over form guy with like 99% of stuff. I would much rather it just work well than, than look good. Um, but like there is just some benefit to intrinsically feeling like, oh, I like the way this looks. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that like, I mean, like you're saying, it doesn't change how it works, but just, you know, having, um, the, a nice, like, uh, the same car with, a uh, you know, the, the premium paint job or, or like a, a spoiler added or things like that. It's like, it is specifically a, a aesthetic thing, but just I don't like, it doesn't necessarily mean that the aesthetic is there to impress others. You could have the aesthetic because you actually like it and appreciate it. And that it makes you feel a little better about the, the item itself or, or, or appreciate what you, what you own. 
At least I, yeah, I think tr- like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true to some degree. I think that, I think that as we talk about this more, mm-hmm. I'm, I think I'm realizing that at least the problem that I had with it, the, or at least the perceived problem I had was more, it wasn't as much about the things and it mm-hmm. was more about the, the flexing part. It was more about feeling insecure and feeling like gotcha. I had to wear the, a certain type of clothing and drive a certain type of car, mm-hmm. um, wear a certain type of sunglasses in order for people to value me or something. Yeah. And I think that for me, it had less to do with the stuff and more to do with the insecurities. And I think that as I got over those insecurities and became more comfortable with myself, that 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 is really what contributed to me stopping like purchasing things specifically because I wanted people to think a certain way about me. Yeah. So the yeah. stuff was just part of it. And I guess that yeah. not everybody's going to express this in the same way. I think and, that's pretty common though. I think a lot of people try yeah. to treat that, that illness with that, that medicine mm-hmm. that's, you know, yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it could be like a keeping up with the Joneses thing. Cause mm. Yeah, I had a friend uh, who who can remain nameless, but it was crazy. Like every time something happened, like I bought my first motorcycle and then he buys a motorcycle. <laughs> One of our friends buys a sports car and then he buys a sports car. And then like the motorcycle gets repossessed and then the sports car gets repossessed. And I'm like, dude, like why? Yeah. Like, you know, and there, it's a lot of it's like a whole keeping up thing. I think when people around you end up getting things or that that some people have this need to keep up with them somehow mm-hmm. that they need to to stay in the same spot or else they're somehow less and that's not even necessarily trying to impress others that's trying to 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 try to give yourself a feeling that you are of the same value as yeah. that person because you have the same shit um, well, i forget where we've talked about this but i mean it's the comparing yourself to others yeah like it, it's yeah that's yeah, because it's like that thing works for them and that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. But is that something that you really want or that you really desire or that you really need? Mm-hmm. Or is it just you trying to kind of, you, you know, keep up with that person so mm-hmm. you, you don't you don't feel less somehow? Which is silly because there's so much more valuable shit that you can do to improve yourself than actually improve yourself. So surrounding yourself with shit. That, I mean, true. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely true. I mean, I, I know, I mean, I do value, um, like, like I've tried to be an advocate for, like I do value well-made tools and well-made things, you know, like there, but whenever, like you're, like you're pointing out, whenever the value to you is, oh, how, how will this make me look to others? That's where it's an issue. And I like, I feel like I've had my problems with that in the past. Um, like you were just talking about, like you, you've had your, your, your experiences with that. I feel mm-hmm. like I've moved on a good amount. Like even now, you know, like I'm fine. Like the, the car that I drive is not necessarily like, it's not flashy by any means. Like it's, uh, you know, I mean, even right now there's a part of it that is like literally duct taped on. It would be, it, it, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's like, there's like, uh, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, that, that doesn't bother me. You know, it's like, I don't feel like my, like I need to, but, but I've also never really been a car guy. Um, I don't know why well, did I mean I but I, I bought the crossfire that was probably like a bad idea and like but that wasn't like I don't think any part of me felt like flexing though I don't know though that's hard to remember dude really you don't remember that oh that it was MySpace also space picture that you put up oh I did yeah I you definitely remember, remember that yeah you're like leaning against it like smoking a lighting a cigarette I'm like dude come on that was a flex no that was that like <laughs> it, honestly that was like a um that was like a candid picture like I didn't like post that or anything like that was like like Nathan just like took that like while we were like hanging out yeah. in front of Hoffman's house. But um uh but it's hard to remember like what my mentality was when I was like 18 or so, you know what I mean? Like yeah. So it's uh, I mean Man, in we all reality so Exactly. God. Like in all reality like there there had to have been some part of of flexing. Like but I just like remember like really liking a two-door sports car that to me almost looked like the batmobile and i was like oh shit like with my new job i can afford these payments like it wasn't a good idea but it was definitely like all right i'm gonna do this like 
Um, but I mean, it, but uh, like being honest, there had to have been some part that was like, oh yeah, like people will like how this car looks or like, you know, like th that has to be part of it. Um, yeah, be, there was, um, oh, sorry. I like interrupted. No, you. no, no, no. Go ahead. My, I, I was um, petering out. There was, um, there was an advertisement and cause the thing is, is like, it's interesting because the idea of impressing others is in many cases a delusion because it won't impress everyone. So yeah. Um, there was an, an advertisement and very for, often I, it won't even impress the, your target audience audience. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in some cases they'll just kind of be like, ah, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, 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 oddly enough, it was for a car I mentioned earlier, or the Dodge challenger. I okay. think it was an advertisement for that. It was a television advertisement. It said the Dodge challenger. So people that care about cars can zoom past people that don't. Uh. Okay. Well, like, or so they can drive quickly past people that don't. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, people, do, not everybody really cares. So, you know, it's like, yeah. it, if you do care, then you can get this and drive fast or whatever. Mm -hmm. oh, I just yawned. Gross. Um, yeah. Is yeah, yawning but, gross? That was weird. I mean, right. I, Never mind. I'm, just, not gonna, it, I'm not going to sidetrack us anymore. <laughs> Well, just I'm sure I looked gross. It probably didn't sound gross. Fair. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't yawning to impress anyone. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I believe you now. So it's almost it almost seems like there's. It seems like we've 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 come up with two subjects from this one subject. Mm -hmm. One of them being like insecurity. Yeah. And the other one being materialism. And yeah. then, well, even another one like. Or like self fulfillment, or like real fulfillment, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe not. But the other two definitely. So, uh, you know, it's like well, we definitely, we definitely try to find fulfillment in material, uh, oh, yeah. material um, possessions a lot. Yeah, and yeah, and I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of people actually in the in the minimalism documentary on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I think one of the guys on there because that came out a few years ago. Um, one of the guys on there was saying that. Some of the, that I think they interviewed, not the two, the two kind of people that they follow around that, that have the podcast, wrote their mm -hmm. book, but there's someone in there talking about how many of us work jobs like, you know, an accountant or uh, maybe a, uh, an IT person, for instance, mm -hmm. or uh, a salesperson, uh, that we work jobs where we don't have anything to show for it. Yeah. Um, like, did you see the movie Gran Torino? Yeah, yeah, with a uh, um, uh, uh, squint westward, right? Yeah, yeah. S squ <laughs> squ squid Spongeward. Yeah, um, yeah. Squid, squid. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was a good movie, though. That was uh, that was yeah. a really good one. So, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't Clint Eastwood's character talk about how he actually? was built that car that he worked at the at Ooh. the manufacturing facility that the car was built at and that he actually took part in building the car itself i think so i don't and i he actually maybe he that he got it like right after it rolled off the line i'm pretty sure i don't know for sure but we'll just use that like mm -hmm. that he was very proud of the fact that he had a hand in building that yeah yeah and you know like in the 19 uh 19 i guess 1940s mm -hmm. um and was it the 19 whenever the industrial revolution was okay. there were like there were like factories and things that were you know being erected and there were buildings um skyscrapers and things that people were creating like infrastructure was being built um i guess i was cl closer to like when eisenhower was in office but mm. that they they could actually point to something that they made yeah um and not everybody could do that but because there were still bankers and things like that of course that just yeah had, jobs based on money or not like a material thing or material possession but i forget it was, i wish i could remember the name of the person but it's someone that they interview for content mm -hmm. in the minimalism documentary on netflix and by the way guys if you haven't seen that good stuff yeah i'm really actually planning on watching it tonight check it. dude you haven't seen it no you we were talking about it last night right oh yeah i think so yeah. um it's it's brilliant um i wait did we really because I've actually talked to a couple people about that recently, and mm -hmm. it seems no one saw it. I'm like, that's weird because it's really awesome. Um, I feel but, like I haven't seen it, but also the 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 line you're talking about about like 
the, the having jobs where we make something that actually sounds familiar to me. So I may have seen I it mean, a long time ago, but it sounds like something someone said on Joe Rogan. So it's well, true. I'm sure yeah. Somebody said that on his, on his podcast at some point, but yep. the, the fact that since we don't have a thing, yeah, like a material thing to point to, like I built this, I did this, mm-hmm. this is my thing. Um, that we, we feel like we need to have a token of what we're doing. So we hmm. purchase an item to, to show our success. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 And, and if you notice like a lot of people, a lot of business owners, like successful ones, mm-hmm. um, like small businesses and things like that, not like, you know, big deal, like, you know, people that, you know, well, I'm a chief executive officers aren't business owners anyway, but yeah, um, that they, and I, I was thinking about this because I have been considering, um, don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I've been considering a food truck. Okay. I've been doing some research on it. And I think I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to be able to do this or afford that or have that. Mm-hmm. Like, but I can keep the lifestyle I have now to some degree. Mm-hmm. And then the thing I can be proud of is that. Yeah. 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 Like I'm not the richest person in the world. And most people don't understand like being a business owner, you don't, you don't get rich doing that. Yeah. Not at all. No. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's about the freedom. That, right. Yeah. yeah. Or, and even, even then like you, you're, you you do not really have that. Cause like you're, you still have, you, you still have a boss. Your boss is your customer. Well, yeah, true, but, true. Yeah. And also, and also if you have too much freedom, then you, the business sinks and a lot of your subordinates don't have any respect for you. I I meant more like the, you have a lot of freedom and control over the environment. Like you are, you dictate like how, like Like the culture and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, sorry, I misunderstood. Um, so, uh, but, but you, you can point to that thing as like, Mm -hmm. that's, this is my thing. Like this is, this company is mine. Well, and, I definitely like every job I've had where I've made something and to, to had something to show for it is the, mm-hmm. I think the most fulfilled I've felt. Yeah. Like, and yeah, I can tell you, like we were, we were talking about it um, before the podcast, like the fact that like, okay, I'm, I'm an IT guy and we cheaped out on the, on a project and didn't hire anybody to run cabling or terminate network mm-hmm. cabling. Mm-hmm. And I've ended up having to do that. And to me now that the renovation's almost complete and i'm seeing like all these cool stuff and the decorative fixtures and everything's coming together and the glass for the offices is installed and the tiling is done and the mm-hmm. carpets up and all this stuff like that i i get to look at it and even though i'm not the one that laid the tiles or put in the grout or laid the carpeting or did the drywall, um, which by the way, the guys that did the drywall were amazing. (laughs) Very, very good. Um, I'm going to find out who they are and give their cards to everyone. Um, (laughs) Even though I didn't necessarily build the structures, I had a part of it. Yeah. And now that it's starting to come together, like I do feel a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had something to do with this and it's something that everyone will take for granted. Mm Mm-hmm. And no one will understand what went into it because this is a lot of this is like retrofitting and yeah. fitting stuff into designs that weren't necessarily intended for this. And since it's a renovation, many other structures have to stay intact. So it was a lot of difficulty went into a lot of this and no one will get that. Oh yeah. And they'll take it for granted, but myself and the engineer who's managing the project who helped me with a lot of the cabling work, like we'll know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we'll have something to be proud of at the end of it, which I think is really cool. And that's the first time I've really had that. Yeah, that's cool. That is, a, yeah, that's actually really cool. Um, yeah. That's, that is like so much of a more rewarding feeling than just buying something that's supposed to be a status symbol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, like, yeah, but, it, and it's like that, that can't be replaced by that. But is that, is that like kind of what people are trying to do, I guess, by, for lack of a better term, the whole flexing thing. Is it like, I mean, you don't have, you don't have a, a feeling of fulfillment that you should have from some other avenue. So it's like, okay, I can go buy a trinket that will hopefully make me feel that way, or at least hopefully make me look that way to, to others or. Yeah. Um, there's a song, I think. Hold on. I'm going to find the lyrics to it. Okay. Um, but, 
is it, yeah, I think is it baby shark. Huh? Is the song you're looking for baby shark? Do no. do 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 do. Is okay. That, is that really a song? You've never heard, okay, yeah, have you I never heard not, baby shark? No, I've never heard that song. Oh my gosh. Okay, the song's called Try and it's by Colby K I'm gonna butcher the last name <laughs> so bad. Um C A I L L A T. I have no idea how to pronounce that. So the song starts out with the song starts out with it's specifically about I think beauty standards. Okay. But the song it's the I'll just read some of the lyrics. Um put your makeup on, get your nails done, curl your hair, run the extra mile, keep it slim so they like you. Hmm. Do they like you? Get your sexy on. Don't be shy, girl. Take it off. This is what you want to belong. So they like you. Do they like you? And then the chorus is, you don't have to try so hard. You don't have to give it all away. Um, you don't have to change a single thing. But it's like, yeah, here's, here's the part. Get your shopping on at the mall. Max your credit cards. You don't have to choose. Buy it all. So they like you. Hmm. Do they like you? Um, it's actually a really good song. Um, so don't make fun of me. I have a S Skylar Gray channel on Pandora. I don't know who that is. Oh, really? It oh. sounds like a porn star. It's it's not, it's dude. Okay, seriously, not. if it was like, if it, okay, it, if, it, if you heard this right here, yes. Starring Skylar Gray. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't fit. Like the dead. <laughs> totally, it totally does. I mean, the voice was a little a little off, but true. Yeah. That that song came on like I was riding the bicycle. The phone was like in my jersey pocket, and that just kind of came on. I was like, this is kind of a cool song. But it's this whole idea that you know you don't have to try so hard. You don't have to change a single thing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, what are you doing? You know. Um. Oh, actually, in the middle of the chorus, she says, "You just have to get up." get up get up that's like, the whole thing is like to to impress someone any like that is the easiest avenue to impress right like anything else takes actual effort versus true the, like like all i need to do is own something for this like it, to impress someone else with action takes actual like getting up and doing something like j just like i mean it, it wasn't that the lyric right there like yeah so you just have to get up get up get up and like that's i don't really know if that means like get up in the morning or if that's like or, you know, any mm -hmm. number of things, or just get up and do something like, yeah, that tells me everything I need to know about you, Mr. Go getter over there. <laughs> but it's um, I, like, I mean, but in all reality, though, that's like the only other than owning things, you impress people by doing things, or like, or yeah, I guess, true. or being something, but you become something by doing something. So, I think like it all, it all boils down to like action, other than like the only other easy, the, the, the other easy way is like, okay, well, I can buy this. And now I look important. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I guess it's like now that now that yeah, you've invoked you've inv invoked some words, and now you've you created some thought in me, sir. That, so good. This is making me realize that tr trying to impress or even. I impressing someone or trying to impress someone isn't necessarily itself a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. choosing something meaningful to do that with instead of, and it could be meaningful to you. I think we can all agree for the most part that having, um, uh, that having a bunch of stuff is really not a, a good way to impress that yeah it makes more sense like i was talking to I was talking to my my significant other recently and sh she's trying like you know like we are she's trying to improve a lot of things about mm -hmm. herself and to le learn some things and pay attention and gather some wisdom mm -hmm. and be more confident in all the positive stuff that you know people say about other people mm -hmm. um but I told her that one really good metric that she can use to to like measure how well she's doing is that when you get to the point where you recognize value that you're able to offer other people, that's a good indication that you're becoming a better human. 
because you've you've had experiences and you've paid attention to those experiences you've chosen to learn from those experiences Mm -hmm. and solve different problems and learn new things to the point where you can actually be valuable to other people exactly so it's not i think in this case it's like it's kind of cool because i feel like for me at least i've gotten to the point where and i feel like this discussion itself has done this but for me at least it it's like it's made me realize that impressing someone isn't necessarily bad and even wanting to isn't necessarily bad depending upon who you want to impress and what situation i guess Mm -hmm. and owning things or having things isn't itself a bad thing Mm -hmm. um but also like the fact is that the main point is getting yourself into like you know debt to have stuff is not a good a, a good thing yeah i mean and i'm like basically person, flat across the board debt is pr- pretty much always bad yeah, yeah it's like yeah it's it's never good like yeah. for anybody like in the if you're leveraging it correctly it can be but that's like true like yeah, like yeah. It, yeah that, that's kind of a corner case yeah. but like but who does that like, exactly what, what, yeah what private party like what individual does that you know very mm-hmm. few of us and you know in the wise words of an accountant that i used to work with um credit card bad yeah exactly yeah um, yeah and the credit cards are like the the biggest thing that people like end up getting themselves in the stupid amounts of debt on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the interest rates are so fucking high; it's yeah. ridiculous. Yep. And they and they give them away this... so easily. Yeah, just to like they... super young people too. It's like you're 18. They're like, "Let me give you a credit card, little boy." <laughs> <laughs> Here, it ta- it tastes like candy. You yeah. just swipe it. Uh, yep. It, I mean that's I mean that's a pretty <laughs> somewhat somewhat i mean distasteful which is my favorite um it is a, it is a very like predatory practice it's like it's very, crazy that very, yeah very accurate it's actually sad that that is the most accurate way you could express it mm-hmm. um i mean it, it 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 captures the reality of it so i think it's it's that there's that if you are trying to impress somebody there's better ways to do it than to get stuff and and if you're yeah. getting stuff like make sure it's stuff you can afford and well, no, I'd like sure to say like it's... better, better, but unfortunately more difficult and more time consuming. Wait, which thing? The, the, the better way to impress people. Oh yeah. They are, they yeah. are like immeasurably more difficult and more time consuming. It's not just going to be as easy and as quick as going out and just buying something yeah. that people will turn their heads and look at, but it is way it, more rewarding. Right. And in the process of doing that stuff, the reward isn't just getting to say, I did this deed or I built this thing or I, or, or I created this quality in myself that when you do those things, you'll, the, the reward isn't just getting to say you did it, but also like all the character you've built in the process of doing it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I, I still struggle with, um, the, I mean, the, so the the last like subject that we wanted to get to, I, I feel like we've talked talked about many of the the other like headers that we had here. But how how do you change this? Um, like, what is the? How do you isolate the core of this, and how do you how do you go from always wanting to do the easy thing and say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to buy a new trinket that will make me look, you know, flashy, and someone will someone will be impressed by it to valuing actions more and and starting to do things to impress people instead like well like how do you how do you make that turn well i mean it's an easy question right what do you yeah you always ask such easy questions ty (laughs) um yeah okay let me address one layer at a time Layer number one is learn to value the self over others. Okay. And then you may be able to, in some way, conquer the desire to Im- impress other people just by valuing, valuing yourself more than them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then recognizing, well, number one, recognizing on the subject of fulfillment, recognizing that the admiration of others for a trivial thing uh, is valueless. 
there's no value in that really when you when you kind of get down to it um and then the other thing is is like find a thing like find a thing you want to do find something difficult find something challenging no matter what it is because yeah for me it's it's really exciting when i can tell somebody about the kind of person i used to be and they okay. don't even believe me what do you like, um when you tell someone about the type of person you used to be what do you, what do you mean by that uh, just someone that's like particularly with like with my girlfriend like i used to be like that um are you okay are you mad at me mm -hmm. um like you know calling all the time texting constantly uh and just like super worried um all the time about like you know what they're doing and if they if they still like me and all this other stuff mm -hmm. and like constantly checking up on them and things like that just being really really insecure and like when yeah. i told her that i was like that she doesn't even believe me yeah. <laughs> and like that's like that's a good thing yeah it's like well it's not that well uh, she has to believe me because like why would i lie to her about that but well, no, she just finds mean, it yeah. very like huh like that's no no way like, exactly really, that was me yeah if you've changed so much yeah. that people find it surprising or like don't believe that that's yeah that, i think that's a good thing yeah. yeah um but you know it's like it's really exciting to me like when someone can develop so much in themselves like you know i i had a, a close friend we, we kind of lost touch but she told me at one point that she actually has has historically at the time she she'd had in the past very difficult issues with like social anxiety mm. and like talking to people that she didn't know and like every time she took me anywhere like we went to a party or went out she was super outgoing hmm. and like very charming and charismatic and like i was like wow like well then i'm impressed as shit because i never would have guessed that you know mm -hmm. like wow you know good job mad props mm -hmm. exciting you know D does anyone say mad props anymore god i just I, dated myself i have no idea man i can't keep <sighs> up with people are saying like yeah that's true it's it's hard um and then there's like and also yeah like you need to also well number one stop trying to fucking impress people um but, mm -hmm. but recognize that if if that if that really is your goal then recognizing also that like stuff doesn't impress people that much it's i mean yeah it is like it's doing yeah. things right like yeah but you got to find something that you want to do like a challenge that's meaningful to you mm -hmm. and do it like and i'm not talking about your career in fact can we just give up on having super meaningful jobs that's stupid those baby boomers can go fuck themselves <laughs> um they're just like pissed off that they they didn't realize that their job had a purpose even though it wasn't like the most mm. amazingly fulfilling thing in the world and they're trying to live vicariously through us through us but you know what someone's got to make the caps for the water bottles <laughs> and someone's got to make the soap and you know true yeah I, someone's someone's got to make the 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 caps for the manholes mm -hmm. like no one's passionate about any of that shit um but i think it's i think it's finding something meaningful outside of your career and it well, doesn't even have to be some big thing it could be yeah. like a interpersonal relationships with people well like i was talking about earlier too it's like i've had stuff nowhere near passionate about but found it really fulfilling because i was actually making something yeah, like it, you talking about that kind of like made me realize this but in food service jobs i've had when i was making pizzas or making sandwiches at different places literally like i've got no passion for sandwich making or pizza making but like making a piece of food that you know like it like comes out of the oven or you you're finished with it and it looks really good and it's like you know that like you're going to present that to someone they're going to think it looks really good and they're going to eat it and that's going to be their lunch like that is a fulfilling feeling as cheesy as that is it's like you're you are feeding people which is the like i mean like kind of a um a staple of the human experience like there, there's a reason why we use the saying like break bread with yeah. someone like that you know like there is a like like food kind of is like this bonding thing for humans. So um, it, like as cheesy as that is though, I did always kind of feel like that, that was like kind of rewarding work, even though it, when you boil it down, you're, you know, literally you're working at a pizza shop, but. Yeah. And, but you know, it's like, just on the subject of that, like just, I'm, I'm going to kind of go with that to sort of try to express meaning in a way, because mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you that there's like a thing like, oh, sorry, I got to take it back to cycling. So okay. there's some like cycling teams, like uh, we'll use the tour in particular. There's actually, I think there's a documentary on Amazon. It's an episodic like documentary okay. on um, a Tour de France race team and their team, like it centers around their team cook. Hmm. 
but then there's still race footage and things like that. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's. That's an interesting uh, idea though. I think it's Orica Scott. So they're, they're, they race Scott bicycles. I think okay. it's Orica is the name of the team, but it's the idea that, that they use, cause you and I have talked about this, like not on the air, but we mm -hmm. talked about it before, like months and months ago. Yeah. I remember but this. Yeah. It's the idea that they would actually use certain types of food to help boost the team's like morale. Yeah. Yeah. That and the, the cool thing, like this is beside the point, but like they had to like scour and scrounge and scout out spots to find like fresh ingredients. And it was like so cool, like watching them move everything and then like go and get all the produce and then like mm -hmm. make sure it was ready just in time. And like the stuff they picked out to make. But like that's the thing is like you make a pizza and maybe because I mean, I can tell you this from personal experience recently, like. I ordered a pizza like a couple a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. and I was like man I just I feel like hell work was crazy got a lot done I'm exhausted I don't want to go anywhere I just I want a pizza man mm -hmm. I really want a pizza and so then you know I put in my order and the pizza gets there I think that pizza delivery people are like everyday heroes to me <laughs> Like nice. they deliver joy. And like, here's the thing. Like I would consider myself a foodie, okay. but there's a very simple joy of just a fucking chain pizza delivery yeah. restaurant pizza. Yeah. And like the pizza gets there and like I bite into it and all of a sudden, like it's the mozzarella and the toppings and the crust. And like all of a sudden, like you just I'm, start weeping. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just, I just cry all over the pizza. It's the so tears good. have flavor. It's like, I get it. But it was just that that brief moment of like, yeah, pizza. Mm -hmm. Like that I was just like, yes, like today is okay now. <laughs> nice. And yeah. There's like so much there's so much that you can do to like improve someone's existence from that like little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean someone definitely hit the nail on the head with pizza. Like whoever whoever invented that, they they bravo. Yeah. Good job. Like, ten, like ten pizza's of ten. my thing. Yeah. Like if I'm ever like training for something or like I'm trying to like lean up or whatever, mm -hmm. my cheat day is always pizza. Really? Yes. Every single cheat day is pizza. I'm like, if I'm good, I get pizza. <laughs> and and I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up on the Ninja Turtles. I don't know. But maybe, that, yeah. that's just like that's just one thing, is that like that just to say like like exactly what you're saying that like I'm trying to like express the meaning that mm -hmm. there is real meaning in that kind of thing. Like, bro, like I can tell you, man, there's nothing like a, a, an Italian nightclub sub at Jimmy John's, mm -hmm. man. And like, you know, that little, that little crusty piece at the end that touches the pan. Yeah. 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 That's like a delicacy to me. Mm -hmm. uh, like I like take it off. It's like crunchy de crunch. I'm yeah, like, you can yeah. pop it off the bread without. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like that to me is just like, that's a delicacy. Um, it's like when you make, have you ever had biryani, the Indian dish with rice? Don't think I have now. Uh, well, when you make it, um, at home, like, I mean, it's, it's in the restaurant. It's weird that they don't serve this to you in the restaurant because, mm -hmm. and actually maybe it's the method they use to cook it cause it's faster, but biryani, like when you make it they're at the very bottom of the pot, like there's like little like black end, like rice oh, pieces yeah, yeah. that stick to the bottom yeah and like there's some vegetables and other stuff in there and some of the spices you like scrape that up and it's like crunchy mm -hmm. like it's like it's like that to me and like to me that's like a really really good thing there at the bottom but it's i just, used to it's love just the, the like the little bits of mozzarella that would get stuck to the pizza pans and would kind of like burn and like you, you'd take someone else's pizza out of the oven and you'd have like a little chip there he's like oh yeah i can eat that it's mine yeah, it's like, no one's, yeah no one's gonna eat that so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah, and that, that's just like talking about the whole food thing, but like just that any any little thing that you can think of might actually be much more meaningful to somebody mm -hmm. than than you think. Uh, well, I mean, if that, you think of anything, well, if you think of anything that's ever impressed you, it's always been an accomplishment or someone doing something, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah, never yeah. been just like, oh, I was really impressed because that dude had a really nice suit. Like that's I, that never that's not ever gonna yeah. sound like a legitimate sentence, yeah. right? Like, it's like I was really impressed because that dude in the really nice suit climbed Everest and mm. actually is missing a pinky from exposure, or, um, and or like even saved one of his fellow climbers on the way down. Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even like when it is um, related to an object, it's because the person made it. It's not just like someone like bought an, an object. It's ne that is never like that is never a legitimate way to to actual um. um success i get like it's just it's, it's it's a cheap yeah yeah and you know there's like 
recognizing that the the thing that you think will impress people probably won't. And I mm-hmm. think that you that we need to, to learn to be impressed with ourselves, to to mm-hmm. recognize the the little things that we do in everyday life that are like super meaningful to somebody. Um, like the pizza That's delivery tough. person. That yeah. person shows up and like they're my fucking hero. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Like the doorbell ring or not the doorbell, sorry, the little if they use the knocker on my door, I'm like, you're strange. Um <laughs> But like they they show up and they knock on the door and you open you're like ah yes the joy has arrived mm-hmm. it's just that little thing that it's it it's recognizing that you're already doing things that are somewhat impressive hmm. that if you if if you're suffering from crippling depression mm-hmm. and you fucking wake up and decide to take a shower before you go to work mm-hmm. sometimes that can be. It's just, deal. it's so hard to see it from another perspective. When you yeah. see it from your own perspective, it's like, it's not impressive at all. It's just the same old shit. But like, that is a, that is a very good point. It is very, very tough to, um, to recognize the things that we are already doing that are, um, for, for lack of a better word, impressive. Uh, I mean, for the, the things that are, that are, um, exemplary, honestly. Yeah. You know, let's, Let's take the word flex as a figure of speech and take the meaning of where it comes from. Flexing is when you, you know, you, you uh, put your body in a position to make your muscles look larger. Mm-hmm. You flex your muscle, you, you cause it to expand. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, you can, people can, you can do that. Like if your pecs are big enough, you can just like, you know, do that thing that people do where they make their pecs. Flexi. I, think, I don't know. I can't can, do it. Can, can I do? Can I be? Can I be an a uh, well actually for a second? Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. I think well actually, you're contracting the muscle. Oh, did that's that? You said expand. I wanted to yeah. say, but I wanted to say contracting, but I didn't know if that was the right thing. But fuck. it is like it's expanding it in one way. It so you're gets, kind of like, I get, yeah. You're, it can. Oh, so the fibers contract, so then it expands the other direction. Yeah, because you are like the whole. I mean, the whole goal oh, is to like, yeah. But yeah, yeah so I guess. Okay. Yeah. So because like that makes sense because like when they say at the top of the bench press. Or like the top of the fly, they say a full contraction. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, sorry. Okay, well, well, actually, <laughs> I was incorrect. So when you contract the muscle, make it bigger. Mm-hmm. But the the point of flexing outside of bodybuilding is an animal thing. It's like a mm-hmm. cat arching their back. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're attempting if if another animal's threatening you, like or uh, uh, and, or for mating, like or. Peacocks Do are flexing I? too, right? Yeah, well, I think yeah, that's the other the other place that's used in the animal kingdom a lot too. Is like it's Let's for see. well, that but that's not like I mean like an actual like flexing of muscles. Oh yeah, true. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like literally, like the actual like okay. hula with the so that you are attempting to intimidate another animal. So like if it's mm. a person, like um, uh, if it's two humans fighting, you're gonna like get real big and like broaden up your shoulders and like pull your shoulders up and forward and you're gonna like, you know, tense them tense everything up and try to look as large and scary as possible. But that's an illusion. Mm-hmm. So that might not deter that individual. And then when they actually when you actually engage in some sort of combat with them, then they'll figure out what's really happening. So yeah, like yeah. flexing it is a figure of speech is it's an analogy, you know, it's mm-hmm. the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're trying to cover up what's actually there with this other thing. You're trying to make your muscles look bigger. So the other, other animal thinks you're dangerous, even though you're not. So you're, yeah. you're like trying to seem like you're more intelligent than you actually are, have more, um, more resources than you actually do. Mm-hmm. Um, any number of different things that we're doing to make this illusion to the other animals, the other humans that mm-hmm. we're bigger and better than we actually are. And I think it's, it's recognizing the truth in yourself and, and realizing that what, what, what's that saying? I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Mm. I am who I think you think I am. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know what you think. Yeah. I yeah. can I can try to predict your perception of me. Mm-hmm. And that's what I believe I am. Mm-hmm. 
but the reality is is that it, it's not I, I i am what i i am what i i think i am what i think i am that i can explain is true like that's what i think is or i can understand is true Did that makes sense that didn't make sense i think i i think i just i think you broke me sorry is this what a stroke <laughs> feels like the inside As, of my uh, brain is like all itchy and i smell tomatoes uh, wait, is that what you actually smell tomatoes? <laughs> no, no. Um, well, it's like I think that it's just realizing who you who you actually are. Yeah, and yeah. Being being realistic and being self aware about the kind of person that you are, mm -hmm. then recognizing what what needs to be better and making that better instead of trying to hide it with crap. There's like there there are a few recurring themes that we tend to keep coming back to. There's like there's the one of balance. Balance seems to yeah. be in, in almost everything. And there's like knowing yourself, like just honestly, like really yeah. being honest and, and doing some, some self exploration and, and figuring out who you are and being, uh, that that's scary though. That is like something that like that, that like, mm -hmm. did, did we, I don't know if that's on the list. Have we done like, uh, talked about like doing a self exploration episode? Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it sounds interesting, but I think it would be boring. Probably, yeah, yeah. But it, it seems like, to, it, it is important, though. Whether or not, like, it, it may not make good content, but so we may not do an episode on it, but I would think that it's an important idea for people to to explore and, and try yeah. to be, be comfortable with is, like, getting to know and explore your, your, your psyche, your ego, like, really figure out what makes your own brain tick. Well, I mean, isn't every episode a self-exploration episode, though? yeah pr pretty much basically yeah it's yeah. basically like taking like a little tiny like compartment of i just did the vogue thing from madonna you did, yeah it's like <laughs> taking a little tiny compartment of yourself here i'll just do a little square and uh examining that mm -hmm. you know exploring that like how that is um yeah that is i mean that's a good point like what else could you do in an, in an episode other than just like best practices or like to, yeah, yeah it's probably not the best topic for an episode no, but can. I mean, we could maybe do like a bunch of homework on self-awareness and mm -hmm. try to come up with some like techniques for how to really, you know, try to really figure yourself out. But mm -hmm. I mean, Nietzsche tried to figure out what was at the core of himself and he lost his fucking mind. So good. Yeah. Good. He, but he was trying to peel back the layers though. He had a lot of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that that is just like at the core of so much and incredibly important is, is yeah. actually just, and it, and it's it it requires I mean like you said peeling back the layers is is a really good way of saying it because I think um I think subconsciously the mind is going to protect itself with layers of bullshit if that makes sense like I think that's going to be yeah. really hard to be honest with yourself and I think there's going to be a lot of like your mind lying to yourself about what's really going on yeah, that's true. Because most of us don't want to acknowledge negative things about ourselves. Like we yeah. think of it as like a threat to our survival if someone says something that's negative. Mm -hmm. I've actually gotten to the point now where, like, I even said it at work today. Like one of the uh, like one of the vendors I work with was kind of annoyed with me. Mm -hmm. What'd you and do? He, like, Why? Well, it's it's not entirely my fault, but I basically sprung something on him. Like, oh, I need uh, we need to get this done, and we probably should have told you like three days ago. Um, but this needs to get done by tomorrow. Oh, like, yeah. And he was like, he kind of said something sort of held back a little bit. And I was like, dude, no, no, no. You should tell me what you're thinking. Cause mm -hmm. like, if I'm an asshole and that's true, then I have to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if something negative is true, it's okay to say. And yeah. He just thought that was, he just thought that was fucking crazy. And like, it's fine. Like, like it doesn't change the situation. It's like it still yeah. needs to get done tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> like I'm still an asshole. But. Yeah, but like he's he's also like kind of in his fifties. So like I, I think he just thought that that was like a weird thing. Like yeah, but it's one of those things like where if the truth is something negative, you just have to accept it. And, mm -hmm. Um. Oh, Arzo, he's gotcha. <laughs> Arzo I was, like, reading that like. I guess he came by to world, came by to talk world about world wow. Effect. He's gonna wait dude, until the podcast is over. Dude, think about all the shit your fucking character has in WoW. That's materialism. It's virtual materialism. Mm, that's you all. get the same dopamine shit going on in your head when you get the stuff. But it's all I it's all function. Games. It's all function though. It's virtual function. But it's the stats though. It's like it I, it's yeah, like but it, the shit looks cool, doesn't it? Some of it, yeah. But it's but it's like 
that, that would be a good point in retail wow we're like remember i told you about like the tra transmogging your gear making it look like a certain thing that would be a good point in that where like you actually search out items for specifically like how they look and like a lot of people there's like rare items that it has nothing to do with the stats but in in classic it is like i mean just like the two oh my god i got the best two items ever last night holy shit last night was a very very good night for me um but like the whole reason i'm excited about them is the stats it's not like i mean one of them is a ring that doesn't even show on your character's model and the other one is well it is a really good looking sword but it's because of the stats it is it is 100 percent the stats tight you're using your your rationalizing voice and you're making your rationalizing face right now i but it's <laughs> Damn it. And then all the butts. Damn it. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. But but once again, like it's all about the amount of joy that you get from that. And I don't yes. think you're doing that to impress other people. This is mm -hmm. specifically about this is specifically <laughs> about impressing others. Yeah, if so, you're like, if you're playing well to impress other people, you're doing something wrong. Let me tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> that is not gonna impress anyone. Like, it's, that's like you're like it's a delusion within the delusion. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Arzo, I love that, dude. Arzo plays with his mom and his dad. They like they that's all crazy. three play as a family. I think that's really cool. I think that is really sweet. Um, like, I, we we have gotten so sidetracked. Um, what is the um? Did you have a final thought? Oh yeah, I, I got a good. I got a good quote. Okay, good, good, good. Let's uh, uh take it away then. Yeah, what is it? This is from the very familiar book and movie Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. Fuck off with your sofa units and string green stripe patterns. I say never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. Nice. That brings us to the end of another episode of the Metacast podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube and you've enjoyed the conversation, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to keep up to date with what we're doing, and comment below and let me know... Um, your experience with uh flexing debt have you have you dug yourself into debt for uh for reasons you probably shouldn't have um if you're interested in further taking part in the conversation or even joining us as a guest on a future episode you can join our discord the link is in the description down below don't forget to be here next week for another episode live wednesday at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time on twitch.tv slash tyler tv thank you guys for listening and i hope you all have a great week